ever wanted to send an email from Power Automate but didn't want to use your own email account? Is a service account not an option? Well today I'm going to show you how you can send an email using Power Automate via Exchange Online using just an app registration. I'll take you through step by step how to set this up and how to secure it so that your app registration can't access more emails than it needs to. I'm Tech Tweedy, let's get started. First thing we're going to do today is over in the Entra Admin Center is we're going to create a new app registration. I'm going to call mine Exchange Demo. Our Automate. And then I'm just going to leave the default options and click on Register. On the next screen, I'm going to click on API permissions. And I'm going to add an API permission. And I'm looking for Microsoft Graph and application permission. And I'm going to select mail.send. This ensures that the app registration we create will only be able to send emails. Next, I'm going to need to approve that. You see it's grayed out. You'll see here over at the status, it says not granted. So you need a global admin account to approve that. So this may be yourself or it may be where you hand off to someone else. What they need to do is they just need to tick that box, click on yes. And you see now both the statuses on green. Now the only one we're interested here is mail.send. Next, we're going to come across to admin center. On security groups, we're going to select mail enabled security group. We're going to give it a name. Now, this security group will be used as a group of users that our app registration can send emails from. So, if you're inside this group, then the app registration can send emails from here. If you're not, then you can't. I'll be sending them from a test ABC. And it doesn't really matter what name you get. That's brilliant. So that's all created. Next, I'm going to open up Exchange Admin Center and I'm going to open up PowerShell for this one. Select a subscription that I can pop this against. And the subscription is just used so you can launch a PowerShell session. Next, we're going to run some PowerShell commands which connect our app registration to Exchange Online and limit its permissions. Now, these are all, you can copy and paste these all from my blog post. Let's give it a moment to connect. Now we've got our PowerShell session, we can start running some commands. I'm going to paste in and import the Exchange Online Management module. I'm going to paste in another command. So we're going to connect to Exchange Online and we're going to use a device code for this. Now I find this is one of the easiest ways to log in. Copy this URL. I need to copy that code in a moment. Jump across. Paste that code in. There we 
we go. I've now connected to online. We should see the PowerShell update. Fantastic. Next, we need to create a new application access policy. So by default, your app registration will be able to do mail.send across all email addresses, and we need to restrict that to say that we only want the app registration to be able to send emails from the email addresses inside this security group. We're just testing that now. We're going to see if we can send an email from a different email address, and we can see we got denied. So the email address that's inside the group, we can. The one outside of the group, we can't. And that's brilliant. And let's just test that again with my email address. And we can see there we got a denied message. Next, we're going to add a custom connector to Power Automate. Now, this custom connector is openly available on my GitHub account, and the link is available in the blog post. Paste it in. Import. And all the settings come in quite nicely. Next, we're going to click on security. We just need to add our application ID to this particular custom connector. I'm going to paste our client ID in. Next, we're going to get a certificate. Now, keep a note of when your certificate expires. Well, not your certificate, sorry. Your secret. Keep a note of when your secret expires. Because you'll have to come and swap it. that copy as you can see it's already expired so but no worries about security there for that copy and paste our client ID in our secret now we'll leave that window open because we'll need that again next we're going to pop in our resource URL graph.microsoft.com and we're going to hit create connect Now on this screen, one of the most important options we want to make sure is ticked. Enable service principal support. Now that will become important later and I'll show you where that shows up. Next, we're going to copy and paste some C sharp code in. This is available as well on the blog post. We just need to copy and paste it in. On update connector. It takes a little bit of time. True. Next, we're going to give it a test. Now, to do this, we're going to need to create a new connection. Now, this is where you'll know if that tick the box to enable service principal support because you won't see this screen, you'll get a different screen. On this screen, we want to connect in service principal and we want to copy and paste our secret, our client ID, and our tenant ID. Make sure you get the client ID and the tenant ID the right way around. Tenant ID is also known as directory ID. Create connection. What we 
we're going to do is we're going to send an email from our test ABC email account, which is inside of the security group. Test message in here. So we, this one is HTML. Content's going to be test. We want to save it to present items. The email address we're going to send it to is demo at weed.technology, which scroll down, we should see the response from that. And we got a 202 response, it went through. Check our email account, you can see it's there. And now we're going to do this in Power Automate. We're going to go and find our custom connector. First, we need to give ourselves a button trigger. We're going to go and locate the custom. Now, the easiest way I find is just to filter by connector type. Then you can see the connector shows up there. Now, we're going to fill out this form. And this is just a slightly nicer interface for accessing the API values. Once again, we're going to send it to test abc at tweed.technology. We give it a nice subject. We're going to select HTML from the drop down. And we can populate this with HTML or any values from our Power Automate flow we like. We're going to add some email addresses that this connector is going to use when it sends an email. And we're going to say yes, we want to save it to our sent item. Save that, give it a test, manually triggering. So, got a green tick, let's click in, see if it's worked. there it's just come through it's just a few short steps if you get stuck please inbox me and i'll be happy to help you if you do want to send attachments as part of your emails please make sure you convert them to basics or or they'll just get rejected by exchange online as you can see no service account is required no license is required however the email address does have to exist in Exchange Online, whether it be a licensed user or a shared mailbox. We are only giving mail.send permissions out. We are not giving any permissions to read emails from anywhere. And then once we've given those mail.send permissions, but then restricting what email addresses that that app registration can access using that security group, mail enabled security. Finally, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, Subscribe and reshare if you can. And finally, stay safe.